The M2 Bradley has been a workhorse of an infantry fighting vehicle for the U.S. Army since the 1980s, but over 40 years later, it's time for a change. Enter the XM30, the next generation of IFV that promises to take thousands of troops to the battlefield in the next generation of warfare. As of this year, the companies behind the project have been given the green light to continue with the development phase of the XM30 project, so it won't be long before we see these fighting transporters in action. Let's have a look at the project so far. In August 2014, General Dynamics Land Systems and BAE Systems Land and Armaments were awarded around $8 million each to develop technologies for the Ground Combat Vehicle Program. This was the original program to replace the U.S. Army's armored vehicles, starting with the M2 Bradley. The program was then canceled due to budget constraints. Two years later, Army officials said they were standing up a next-generation combat vehicle program to introduce a new family of vehicles by 2035. Although this wasn't to be centered around a new IFV, it was set to replace the M1 Abrams, Bradley Fighting Vehicle, Mobile Protected Firepower, and the Striker. However, it appeared this program also lacked the funding needed to progress. Another two years passed, and in the summer of 2018, the Army officially established the Next Generation Combat Vehicle Program to replace the M2 Bradley. It was then redesignated and named as the Optionally Manned Fighting Vehicle, or OMFV. Just like its original intention, the Next Generation Program was expanded to include tanks and the Bradley-based Armored Multipurpose Vehicle. In March 2019, the Army invited proposals from companies willing to design such vehicles. There were strong contenders and massive engineering powerhouses started to compete. At the start of 2020, the contenders had been narrowed down to a variant of the Lynx KF-41, developed between well-known military engineers Raytheon and Rheinmetall. Up against that was the Griffin III, developed by General Dynamics Land Systems. The Lynx was disqualified after failing to meet a deadline to ship the prototype to the proving grounds by the requested date. This left only GDLS in the running, but this was also disqualified because its prototype was too heavy, so two couldn't fit in a single C-17 aircraft, which was a key requirement of the program. This left the Army at a crossroads. Their two main designs had been disqualified, and any other potential developers were being put off by the fact that development costs were being put onto the engineers, rather than provided by the Army. After the Army decided to put up some money for the project, they were able to find some more potential vehicles. This started a new rebooted program. In the summer of 2021, the Army gave contracts to five teams. The total value of this contract was worth almost $300 million. The teams that were chosen were Point Blank Enterprises, Oshkosh Defense, BAE Systems, General Dynamics Land Systems Incorporated, and American Rheinmetall Vehicles. In a 15-month-long phase, these teams were tasked to come up with designs that would reduce the potential engineers to two companies. There were three main requirements given to all of these teams. The new IFV needed to be a tracked vehicle with a hybrid electric drive. There needed to be an unmanned turret housing a 50mm autocannon. This could also be a 30mm turret that could be upgraded to the larger caliber eventually. Then, in terms of space, it needed a reduced crew of two, a commander gunner and the driver, with additional space to carry six troops. Once the designs were submitted, the Army chose two suitors to continue with the process and develop their prototypes. These were General Dynamics Land Systems Inc. and American Rheinmetall. The total value of the contracts was $1.6 billion, which will contribute to the development of reconnaissance whilst also providing protection, transportation, and small arms firepower for squad elements. The program has also been renamed again and is now known as the XM-30 Mechanized Infantry Combat Vehicle. The total cost of the program is estimated at $45 billion. The next stage of development will involve the build of 11 prototypes each, seven with the contract award with an option for four more. On top of this, the two contractors will also be developing two ballistic hulls, turrets, armor coupons, and digital model twins during development. The Army is now placing massive emphasis on competition between the two companies to really push what they're capable of. Once the prototypes have been tested, planned for the first quarter of 2025, 
the Army will choose a winner in 2027 to enter service. One of the most important aspects of the program is sustainability, and as a result, Allison Transmission has already announced that it is providing its E-Gen electric hybrid propulsion for the American Rheinmetall XM30 design. The system is specifically designed and developed to fill the performance demands of future-proofed combat vehicles. It's an integrated power pack that provides 850 kW, 1140 HP. Its eight forward and two reverse gears help with providing this power to the vehicle's tracks. The engine's compact size and comparatively low weight of under 2,000 kg means that it's more versatile as to where it can be placed in the chassis. It also features a 220 kW electric motor, which allows for optional silent driving and an inverter for vehicle power generation. On top of the three main priorities for this new IFV, there are other requirements that will need to be installed. These include machine guns, anti-tank guided missiles, an advanced third-generation forward-looking infrared sensor, and intelligent fire control. On top of this, the Army has asked for integrated active protection systems, kitted armor, and advanced signature management capabilities. The Army has made very clear the needs for the XM-30, whichever engineer they decide to give the contract to. First, it needs to enable command and control at the platoon level and higher by rapidly generating, receiving, and passing information to dismounted elements, other vehicles, and command nodes. Then it also needs to detect, engage, and destroy enemy infantry fighting vehicles beyond the range of the enemy's primary weapon system, and rapidly defeat dismounted enemy infantry threats. Its third job will be to improve organizational effectiveness by reducing the logistics burden on the Armored Brigade combat team with better reliability in onboard diagnostics and prognostics, ease of maintenance, and reduced burdens on the supply chain in terms of spare parts, fuel, and munitions. Finally, there will be a need for the XM-30 to allow rapid adaptation by means of growth margins that allow for future technology to be installed on the vehicle. There is still a long way to go with the program, but the selection of two contractors to start work on a prototype is a huge step to the next generation of fighting vehicles for the U.S. Army. While it has successfully chosen its two finalists, there is much work to be done before any prototypes are ready for trials, which could potentially throw up more issues and delays. If the Army has learned from its lessons from previous failed programs, it will have a very useful vehicle at its disposal that will deliver troops to the battlefield. What do you think about the XM-30 program? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.